The Complete Works of William Shakespeare by William Shakespeare Act I, Scene 1 London The palace entered the Duke of Norfolk at one door, at the other, the Duke of Buckingham and the Lord Abergavenny Buckingham. Good morrow, and well met. How have you done since last we saw in France? Norfolk I thank your grace, healthful, and ever since a fresh admirer of what I saw there. Buckingham an untimely ague stayed me a prisoner in my chamber when those sons of glory, those two lights of men, met in the vale of Andron. Norfolk. Twixt Gwines and Arde I was then present, saw them salute on horseback, beheld them, when they lighted, how they clung in their embracement, as they grew together, which had they, what four thronged ones could have weighed such a compounded one? Buckingham. All the whole time I was my chamber's prisoner. Norfolk. Then you lost the view of earthly glory, men might say, till this time pomp was single, but now married to one above itself. Each following day became the next day's master, till the last made former wonders its. Today the French, all clinkent, all in gold, like heathen gods, shone down the English, and tomorrow they made Britain India, every man that stood showed like a mine. Their dwarfish pages were as cherubins, and gilt. The madams, too, not us to toil, did almost sweat to bear the pride upon them, that their very labor was to them as a painting. Now this mask was cried incomparable, and th ensuing night made it a fool and beggar. The two kings, equal in luster, were now best, now worst, as presents did present them, him and I still him in praise, and being present both, twas said they saw but one and no discerner durst wag his tongue in censure. When these sons for so they phrase and by their heralds challenged the noble spirits to arms, they did perform beyond thought's compass, that former fabulous story, being now seen possible enough, got credit, that Bevis was believed. Buckingham. Oh, you go far. Norfolk. As I belong to worship, and affect in honor honesty, Detract of everything would by a good discourse or lose some life which action's self was tongue to. All was royal, to the disposing of it not rebelled, order gave each thing view. The office did distinctly his full function. Buckingham. Who did guide I mean, who set the body and the limbs of this great sport together, as you guess? Norfolk. One, certes, that promises no element in such a business. Buckingham. I pray you, who, my lord? Norfolk. All this was ordered read by the good discretion of the right reverend cardinal of York. Buckingham. The devil speed him. No man's pie is freed from his ambitious finger. What had he to do in these fierce vanities? I wondered that such a keech can with his very bulk take up the rays O.T.H. beneficial sun, and keep it from the earth. Norfolk. Surely, sir, there's in him stuff that puts him to these ends, for, being not propped by ancestry, whose grace chalks successors their way, nor called upon for high feats done to th crown, either allied to eminent assistance, but spider-like, out of his self-drawing web, it gives us note the force of his own merit makes his way a gift that heaven gives for him, which buys a place next to the king. Abergavenny I cannot tell what heaven hath given him let some graver eye pierce into that, but I can see his pride peep through each part of him. Whence has he that? If not from hell, the devil is a niggard or has given all before, and he begins a new hell in himself. Buckingham. Why the devil, upon this French going out, took he upon him without the privity o th king t a point who should attend on him? He makes up the file of all the gentry for the most part such to whom as great a charge as little honor he meant to lay upon, and his own letter, the honorable board of counsel out, must fetch him in he papers. Abergavenny. I do know kinsmen of mine, three at the least, that have by this so sick in their estates that never they shall abound as formerly. Buckingham. Oh, many have broke their backs with laying manners on em for this great journey. What did this vanity but minister communication of a most poor issue? Norfolk. Grievingly I think the peace between the French and us not values the cost that did conclude it. Buckingham. Every man, after the hideous storm that followed, 
was a thing in spurred, and not consulting, broke into a general prophecy that this tempest, dashing the garment of this peace, abode the sudden breach on't. Norfolk, which is butted out, for France hath flawed the league, and hath attached our merchants' goods at Bordeaux. Abergavenny. Is it therefore th ambassador is silent? Norfolk. Mary is. Abergavenny. A proper tide of a piece, and purchased at a superfluous rate. Buckingham. Why, all this business our reverend cardinal carried. Norfolk. Like it your grace, the state takes notice of the private difference betwixt you and the cardinal. I advise you and take it from a heart that wishes towards you honor and plenteous safety that you read the cardinal's malice and his p. Oldency together, to consider further, that what his high hatred would effect wants not a minister in his power. You know his nature that he's revengeful, and I know his sword hath a sharp edge its long and may be said it reaches far, and where twill not extend, thither he darts it. Bosom up my counsel you'll find it wholesome. Lo, where comes that rock that I advise your shunning? Enter Cardinal Wolsey, the purse born before him, certain of the guard, and two secretaries with papers. The cardinal in his passage fixeth his eye on Buckingham, and Buckingham on him, both full of disdain Wolsey. The Duke of Buckingham surveyor? Ha! Where's his examination? Secretary. Here, so please you. Wolsey. Is he in person ready? Secretary. I please your grace. Wolsey. Well, we shall then know more, and Buckingham shall lessen this big look. Excellent Wolsey and his train Buckingham. This butcher's cur is venom-mouthed, and I have not the power to muzzle him, therefore best not wake him in his slumber. A beggar's book outwards a noble's blood. Norfolk. What are you chaffed? Ask God for temperance. That's th appliance only which your disease requires. Buckingham. I read in's looks matter against me, and his eye reveled me as his abject object. At this instant he bores me with some trick. He's gone to th king. I'll follow, and outstare him. Norfolk. Stay, my lord, and let your reason with your collar question what tis you go about. To climb steep hills requires slow pace at first. Anger is like a full hot horse, who being allowed his way, self-metal tires him. Not a man in England can advise me like you. Be to yourself as you would to your friend. Buckingham. I'll to the king, and from a mouth of honor quite cry down this Ipswich fellow's insolence, or proclaim there's difference in no persons. Norfolk. Be advised. Heat not a furnace for your foes so hot that it do singe yourself. We may outrun by violent swiftness that which we run at, and lose by overrunning. Know you not the fire that mounts the liquor tilt run o'er and seeming to augment it wastes it? Be advised. I say again there is no English soul more stronger to direct you than yourself, if with the sap of reason you would quench or but allay the fire of passion. Buckingham. Sir, I am thankful to you and I'll go along by your prescription. But this top-proud fellow whom from the flow of gone I name not, but from sincere motions, by intelligence, and proofs as clear as founts in July when we see each grain of gravel I do know to be corrupt and treasonous. Norfolk. Say not treasonous. Buckingham. To T.H. King I'll sate, and make my vouch as strong as shore of rock. Attend, this holy fox, or wolf or both for he is equal ravenous as he is subtle, and as prone to mischief as able to perform his mind and place infecting one another, yeah, reciprocally only to show his pomp as well in France as here at home, suggests the king our master to this last costly treaty, th interview that swallowed so much treasure and like a glass did break i th wrenching. Norfolk. Faith, and so it did. Buckingham. Pray give me favor, sir. This cunning cardinal the article's O.T.H. combination drew as himself pleased, and they were ratified as he cried thus let be to as much end as give a crutch to T.H. dead. But our Count Cardinal has done this, and tis well, for worthy Wolsey, who cannot err, he did it. Now this follows, 
which, as I take it, is a kind of puppy to th old damn treason, Charles the Emperor, under pretense to see the queen his aunt for twas indeed his color. But he came to whisper Wolsey here makes visitation his fears were that the interview betwixt England and France might through their amity breed him some prejudice. For from this league peeped harms that menicked him privily deals with our cardinal. And, as I trow which I do well, for I am sure the emperor paid ere he promised, whereby his suit was granted ere it was asked but when the way was made, and paved with gold, the emperor thus desert, that he would please to alter the king's course, and break the force said peace. Let the king know, as soon he shall buy me, that thus the cardinal does buy and sell his honor as he pleases, and for his own advantage. Norfolk. I am sorry to hear this of him, and could wish he were something mistaken in it. Buckingham. No, not a syllable. I do pronounce him in that very shape he shall appear in proof. Enter Brandon, a sergeant at Aramis before him, and two or three of the guard Brandon. Your office, sergeant, execute it. Sergeant. Sir, my lord the Duke of Buckingham, and Earl of Hereford, Stafford, and Northampton, I arrest thee of high treason, in the name of our most sovereign king. Buckingham. Lo you, my lord, the net has fallen upon me. I shall perish under device and practice. Brandon. I am sorry to see you tain from liberty, to look on the business present. Tis his highness pleasure you shall to th tower. Buckingham. It will help nothing to plead mine eye. No sense, for that die is on me which makes my wits part black. The will of heaven be done in this and all things. I obey. O my lord Aberga, New York, fare you well. Brandon. Nay, he must bear you company. To Abergavenny, the king is pleased you shall to th tower, till you know how he determines further. Abergavenny. As the duke said, the will of heaven be done, and the king's pleasure by me obeyed. Brandon. Here is Warren from the king t attached Lord Montacute and the bodies of the duke's confessor, John de la Carr, one Gilbert Peck, his chancellor Buckingham. So, so. These are the limbs O.T.H. plot. No more, I hope. Brandon. A monk O.T.H. Chartreux. Buckingham. Oh, Nicholas Hopkins? Brandon. He. Buckingham. My surveyor is false. The old great cardinal has showed him gold. My life is spanned already. I am the shadow of poor Buckingham, whose figure even this instant cloud puts on by darkening my clear Sunday. My lord, farewell. Excellent. 